Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Properties and Structures of Matter video number 25. In this one we're going to just quickly touch on allotropy. In this last section we're looking at bonding and the structures that are formed as a result of different types of bonds, both physical and chemical. Allotropy is one of the interesting things to look at as a part of this discussion because allotropy is a property that certain types of elements have that ha can have multiple ways in which they are bonded together. Possibly the best example of this is carbon. It's the one that we're probably most familiar with. But where there are um, substances which have the same chemical formula but which exist in two or more distinctly different structural forms, these are called allotropes. And as I said, probably the two best examples are diamond, which is an allotrope of carbon, and graphite, which is also an allotrope of carbon. These two allotropes look very different and they're bonded in a different kind of a way, but they both contain the atoms and only the atoms of carbon. So despite the fact that there must be some differences in the way these atoms are organized, they are still made up of the same type of atoms. And therefore, there are certain types of properties which we can rely on, <clears throat> particularly the way that the chemical reacts but there are going to be a number of different physical properties that are going to differ between these. Um, if we think again about diamond and graphite, the most um, obvious one of those, I guess, is hardness. And going right along with hardness is general appearance. Certainly no mistake in graphite for diamond. So here are those two that I just talked about, graphite on the left and then one across is diamond and clearly some quite significant differences. But these are not the only two allotropes of carbon. There are actually two more. One which are called Buckminster fullerene. Uh, shortened to buckyballs. Um, they kind of have an arrangement, uh, an arrangement that's very similar to footballs or soccer balls uh, with the pentagons and hexagons that you can see uh, in this structure here uh, being organized around in a little ball. This has been a very interesting area of research in chemistry where we've actually been able to look at the ways in which carbon bonds together and how that can actually affect the properties. Now I want you to go into these in just a little bit more detail during class time, um, but each of these bonds in a different kind of a way. You can see with the Buckminster fullerene, there's actually a particular number of carbons that we can identify. With the other two, they tend to be network structures, and network structures are structures which, um, uh, which don't have a distinct molecular base. One interesting new development is a structure called graphene. Graphene is being um, investigated because it is uh, effectively a substance that can be a, a very thin coating uh, on certain types of materials. Just you can see these little rings of carbon um, and they are uh, it all joined together to, to form a nice uh, surface. This is uh, an area of quite important research at the moment and one of the things that I um, will get you to actually have a look at in class to see if we can find out why each of these different allotropes of carbon are so different. A couple of other quick examples for you um, before we leave this. Um, O2 and O3 are both allotropes of oxygen. O2, oxygen, O3, ozone. The other one you might have a look at is sulfur. Sulfur has a number of different allotropes um, that we can look at, uh, both from a crystalline and an amorphous form. Uh, and the other thing we have are two different allotropes of phosphorus, red and white. So there are a number of elements that do this. Uh, we'll actually be having a look at a few of these in a little bit more detail during class. Thanks for watching.